Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So I am knee deep in rebuilding this vintage Boxford VSL lathe, and I'm really close to being able to uh, get the spindle back into the headstock here, as well as the, the back gear. There's a, the main spindle goes through here, as you can see, that's the part that aligns with our ways, and there's a back gear shaft with two caps um, that go into the back of this. And this thing was in horrible condition when I got it. Everything was caked in old grease. Um, the shifter mechanism for the back gear didn't even work. Um, and I've been working on this thing for quite some time and I am very close to being able to get the spindle uh, back into place. Now this is the front, this is the nose of the spindle. Um, one of the bearings here is captured on the spindle itself. Uh, there's the other bearing and then there's an arrangement of items here. Both of these items go on the shaft of the spindle, uh, and then the back gear seats in these two cups on the end. And there's a shifter fork here that actually uh, positions the, uh, slides the, the back gear and, and gear um, in and out of position so that this is either direct drive uh, from the pulley or driven through the back gear with a significant gear reduction. So why am I telling you all this? Well. When we put this spindle into the lathe, these bearings have to be set at a very specific preload. They need to be tight, but not too tight. And Boxford has a really interesting procedure for how these are supposed to be set. They define what the, um, essentially what the torque value of, um, well, not the torque value of the nut, but they describe um, how, how much force it should take to turn the spindle um, and that the the preload on those bearings is set with this nut well it's not a lot of force right so it's uh they're saying between one and two pound inch which is actually the accurate way to write that although we more commonly refer to it today as inch pounds or foot pounds um, for uh, for larger amounts of torque but pound inch and um, pound foot is actually the more accurate way to uh, to write it. Uh, for speeds, 1400 to 2000 RPMs are over between one and one half. So we probably want to shoot for that range. This is a variable speed lathe that is going to go um, up to that RPM range, no problem. Uh, do not exceed two pound inch. You might wonder how you're possibly going to measure um, how how much force it takes to turn the spindle. Well. What they recommend is fitting the, uh, the face plate to the, the spindle, um, wrapping some string around it, and then pulling with uh, a fish scale or a force gauge. The problem is, I don't actually have the face plate for this machine. They also, this somewhat complicates how you have to read this because you have a mechanical advantage. The larger uh, this piece that you're wrapping the string around is. And they note that here, uh, the radius of the, they call it a catch plate here, is usually 2 and 9 sixteenth. So you need to multiply the balance reading by the radius of, of whatever you're wrapping the string around. Uh, radius obviously being, um, you know, half the distance, not the diameter. The radius is the distance from the center uh, to, the, to the edge of, you know, whatever the circular piece is. I'm not a fan of that for a couple different reasons. I don't have this. Um, I don't have a faceplate for this machine. I'm sure at one point one existed, but it didn't follow the machine and the various uh, you know folks that owned it over the years. Uh, and also, uh, I don't like the idea. But by multiplying this, we're I feel like we're reducing the um, the accuracy of our measurement again because we're we're giving ourselves a mechanical advantage. So years ago, I designed a spindle nose cap for this. It just goes up here, and the threaded part you see here, this is an external thread. Uh, you might wonder how that's gonna match up with this external thread, it doesn't. There's a, there's a locking ring here, this guy, um, that goes onto here, locks in place via a key, and then this part is free to turn. It's locking with a key against this, uh, this piece of external thread here that's able to actually spin um, on the, uh, that part of the, the spindle shaft up here. This isn't actually attached to, to anything. Uh, but we can't use this either because this is not the diameter we want. It's just a basically a random diameter. We could use this and then 
Uh, do the math and multiply it out, but again, it's uh, it is going to not be as accurate as measuring from a smaller diameter. Now, I think if we go too small, we're going to get some strange things happening with potentially friction of the uh, the string. Because if that's not clear here, you're wrapping a string uh, around this this drum or this this faceplate, uh, and then you're pulling from this side with a scale in between. So we're pulling. And as we do that, it's going to unravel that string and give us a measurement. If we go too small, I think there's going to be some weird stuff that happens with uh, just friction of the string uh, touching the, the next wind of string or just stuff like that. But here's what I'm thinking. What if I could take this design um, and essentially build onto it a drum that is exactly two inches? Why two inches? Because the radius of two inches is one inch. And then our math to achieve the amount of pound inches of force that we're doing to the spindle is we're multiplying the value by one. So there's no conversion needed. And I think we'll have uh, the most accurate measurement uh, at that diameter as well. So let's, uh, let's give that a shot. I'm pretty sure I still have the design for this. I'm going to go try and, and dig it up and um, build onto this. I'm imagining basically this, uh, but with what essentially would look like a spool for, for thread coming out, a way to attach uh, the thread at some point, and um, probably a tapered surface or a rounded edge or something, uh, so that if we do get close to the edge, we're not catching on like a, like a hard, sharp edge as we're, as we're unwinding it. I've never done this procedure, so I don't really know exactly how much string we're gonna have to wrap around there, uh, or um, how far we're going to have to walk backwards, uh, pulling on this till we get a consistent reading. I also don't have one of these fish scales or spring balances, so I'm going to order what I think is a much more accurate modern version uh, that will work within this range. All right, for everyone who hasn't already clicked out of the video because I'm going way too deep on the engineering of what we're trying to do here, uh, let's, uh, let's go design this. All right, guys, and here is the design I came up with, uh, or I should say the, uh, the slight redesign I came up with. Uh, if you guys were watching the montage there, you might have noticed that uh, I made a really stupid uh, classic design mistake. I forgot about gravity, and I originally had this up here as just a curved uh, surface like this, and then a flat face uh, at the top of the, uh, the hub or the, the, uh, uh, the spool, whatever you want to call this. Um, I got all the way to slicing it before I realized my error. Uh, I'm sitting there looking at it, just kind of giving it a final thought. And I'm like, yep, definitely forgot about gravity. So I adjusted this to be just a, a 45 degree angle up here and just lengthened this a bit. So I still have the same amount of distance on the spool uh, to wrap the cord around. Um, and I hollowed this out as well uh, to make it easier to print. And inside I have a 45 degree taper up here. So that should print with no problem. Um, I do have an overhang here, and I have an overhang on the inside of this feature that I added to tie the string to, uh, but those are both small enough that they should print without any issue uh, at all. So um, let's see, I put some text up here on the top. This is pretty small, um, but uh, it's, it's not the end of the world if it's not readable. This is just, you know, I'm going to throw this in the drawer, and when I go to check my spindle tension again, you know, in a year or two or whatever, um, it'll be easy enough uh, to take a look at this and... Um, know, figure out uh, how exactly I'm supposed to use this and read it uh, again down the line. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get this printed out.
All right, welcome back. So this is ready to go off the print bed. It came out pretty good. Um, was really kind of unsure of the size to make this, uh, to tie off the string on, uh, both to pass the string through and to you know be strong enough to, uh, to hold it when we pull back. Honestly, I went a little bigger than I probably need to now that I'm seeing it uh, in real life, but it uh, came out real nice. The text is super hard to read here in the end. Actually, the, the reflection there, uh, if I hold it just the right way in the camera, makes it easier to see, but this is super hard to read. Let's try the, uh, the trick with putting some caulk in here that I did a couple videos ago and see if that makes it more readable. All right, that is much more readable like that. I really like that trick of using the paintable caulk uh, in the recesses on 3D prints like this. Uh, if you haven't seen that before, go back a couple videos uh, for the video that I did on the, uh, the milling machine um, table covers. I uh, detail a bit more of it uh, in that video. All right, let's get some string on here. I've got some of this stuff I found in my box of junk. I don't think we need like particularly strong string for this. We're not gonna be pulling on it that hard. We we'll probably do need a couple feet of it. So let's see here. See if we can get this tied on. And we want to keep this at one wrap, so I'm trying to get it kind of all organized here on the drum because if we go two wraps, uh, the diameter is going to be different and our reading will be slightly off. Probably not, uh, not off more than what the accuracy of how we're going to measure this is anyway, but I'm trying to keep it to one wrap. All right, so now on the other end of this, we need a way to measure how hard we're pulling. So as I mentioned, I was gonna order uh, a much better force gauge for small amount of forces like this, because we're gonna measure like, you know, one or two pounds. Um, and it has also arrived and played with it a little bit yesterday when it came. Um, I tested it. Uh, so this goes up to, I think, 22 pounds. I was really curious how accurate it was at much smaller amounts. So I set the, the unit to Pounds. I turned it upside down, uh, then calibrated it and pushed down on a postage scale, and it was very, very accurate. I was not seeing more than about two or three percent difference from what the scale was reading, even at really small amounts, well under one pound. So, I think this is gonna this is gonna do the business. We do need to change the end on here. If you like to nerd out on uh, measuring equipment like this, I'll link this uh, down below in the in the description. I got this off of Amazon, and it was uh, is not expensive for for how accurate it is and the fact that it measures in uh, in push and pull. All right, so I think if we put a small knot on the end of this guy so that we can hook into that. All right, yeah, I think that'll uh, I think that'll work. So let's get the spindle into the lathe so we can try out our test setup here. All right, spindle's back in the lathe and I've got the locking ring installed as well. The way that this, uh, this spindle nose works is this is a taper here on the outside. This is an L00 taper. And this is a captured uh, nut. Uh, there's a, like a, uh, a flange on the back of this taper that keeps this guy from, from coming down. And then your chucks or whatever you're putting on the lathe uh, have threads on them. And you line up the key in here with the, or the key way on this piece here with the key on the taper. 
and then just spin that captured nut and it draws it in on the taper. And now this will spin true with the spindle. So you wind this in and just kind of give it a test pull. Okay, so the instructions did say uh, that you've got to overcome the breakaway uh, sort of force that it takes to get this guy pulling back first. So I'm noticing I'm pulling quite hard until it starts to move. Uh, but then once it moves, we're measuring the amount of force that it takes uh, to keep it moving. So let's see here. My string might actually be too long. This is going to be really hard. Uh, I think to get all of this in frame, I'll probably just, well, let me see if I can back you guys up a little bit here. There we go. You can, uh, I think you can see most of the, the setup here now. So let's try pulling on this and see how much, I can set this on peak and we'll see how much force it takes just to get it moving. So quite a bit, 9.84 pounds uh, to get this guy moving. Now, again, these bearings are not warmed up. I might need to slacken these off a bit, um, but let's see if I can get a measurement um, of what it takes to keep it moving. I don't know if I want to try and read the screen in real time or zero it after the breakaway, uh, and then I can still use peak to hold the value. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm naturally kind of pausing a little bit um, as I'm zeroing it because I don't believe we're really at seven pounds uh, to keep that guy moving. Although it's possible. I mean, these bearings are cold. Uh, I think what I might have to do is here a split screen so you guys can see the, uh, the spindle turning as well as the display on this. Let me get this set up again. All right, I think I saw about five and a half there steady as I was pulling it. So we're probably too tight. Again, I won't know for sure until I actually warm up uh, those, those spindle bearings uh, first, but just for the sake of testing, let's loosen that up a bit and see if we can get down to the range uh, that Boxford calls for on the spindle. I think I've seen an average of about 0.6 there, so now I've gone too far in the other direction, but uh, you guys get the idea. Uh, so when I do finally get the uh, the bearings run in on this guy, I'm going to be looking for a consistent probably 1, 1 1.2 uh, pounds of pull on here. Hey guys, as always, thanks for taking the time to hang out with me uh, this week. Um, really enjoyed this week's print. Hope you guys did too. Um, if this is your first time on the channel, I do a new video like this every single Friday that features a design that I've come up with or something I found online that solves a problem out here in the shop for me, um, in the house uh, or just around the yard in general. If you like this video, please consider hitting that like button. It really helps out the channel and also tells YouTube what you like, so it's going to show you more stuff like this. And guys, if you do subscribe, I will see you next Friday. Oh, hey guys, and listen, if you see my wife, I definitely did not just buy this for the video, found it in a drawer, already had it. Oh, hi, babe. No, uh, nope. I uh, haven't been on Amazon or Facebook Marketplace for days. Yep, nope. I'm cold turkey. Yep. Yep.